The M1 Garand is not banned by this bill. The quintessential Chinese army weapon of war, the SKS is not banned by your bill. This is the, the M1 carbine, also not banned by this bill. A technical, literal weapon of war. It is, you know, we had some lecture about some historic firearms and some relics. Those firearms are old and clunky and difficult to use. Gerald Patton says, in my opinion, the M1 rifle is the greatest battle implement ever devised. The M1 of World War II, the various weapons that we saw the Chinese marching with, uh, those ancient guns uh, were far less lethal. Uh, those ancient guns. were far less lethal. With assault rifles, exit wounds can be a foot wide. The victim is oftentimes, when they're shot in the head, their skulls explode. Arms and legs disintegrate and turn to dust. And these bullets don't just pierce, they explode inside the victim's body and decimate them. I'm not against the Second Amendment, and I will take issue with any babble about this undermines the Second Amendment. It does not. It is to create a militia. It's false. No way. There are many weapons that are not included. It exempts antique and most manually operated firearms. Good news, lads. The legislature has exempted antiques in the assault weapons ban. You know, the firearms already not legally recognized as firearms. Huzzah! It's about being able to protect yourself in your home from the government in some type of civil war that they foresee. It bans handguns that the Bush administration, the ATF, said are characteristics that make them especially dangerous. That it's time to modernize our outdated laws. They are law-abiding until they are not. Breaking news. Researchers have announced that every criminal was once a law-abiding citizen. That means anyone could potentially become a criminal, even you. Which is why it is important to treat everyone as a criminal preemptively. Quite frankly, my brothers would suggest that if you have to get an assault type weapon to go hunting, you must be a really bad shot. <laughs> <laughs> and I stand with Ukraine. And I stand with what the United States has done in the weapons that they have given in this war. Quote, um, the sorts of weapons protected were those in common use at the time. That was the musket, of course. And if you are an originalist, as Justice Scalia was, then you would say you have a right to carry a musket. Why are you always lying? If you're talking about common use today, they're not in common use today. They're a small fraction, less than but you don't have a right to carry an R-15, an AR-15. But even if you want to update that language to say, well, in common use at the time means in common use in our time, which is what I'm hearing from the gentleman, how is it in common use for Americans to use AR-15 when 68% of Americans don't own any gun at all and probably 80 or 85% of Americans don't own assault weapons? How is that common use? This bill would ban weapons that are in common use in the United States today. Would the gentleman yield? I would if, to, to, if I for an answer to that question. Yeah, that's the point of the bill. So, so, do you mean you, so to clarify, Mr. Chairman, you're saying it is the point of the bill to ban weapons that are in common use in the United States today. Yes, the problem is if the gentleman will yield. When you talk about what was in common usage, if you go back to the Miller case, they were talking about a militia that was called up and expected to bring their own firearms. These military-style assault weapons obviously didn't exist then. So the notion that you need some evidence of a ban of a gun that didn't exist is kind of clever, but impossible. You know, we live in a civil society. We live in a society where everyone should have the right to feel um, um, safe. Because there are, unfortunately, so many um, um, assault rifles and, and so forth 
in our society, um, it may be necessary for law enforcement to be able to use the same type of weapons in defense. I mean, 700 and what, 47 may be killed by guns if we pass this today, but we would also save 253 lives. Those are valuable lives. 700 and what, 47 may be killed. Save 253 lives. Around this debate, I've seen a number of tiny men hold large guns and threaten our president by telling him, come and get them. Let me uh, explain an AR-15. Uh, it is a DDM-4 rifle, which is manufactured by Daniel Defense. Uh, and uh, it costs about $400 to $2,000. So-called insurrectionist view of the Second Amendment, that the Second Amendment's purpose is to give the people the right to overthrow or fight our government or fight the police or threaten armed resistance if the government is somehow being unfair or unjust. This reading is totally, absolutely absurd. Stabilizing brace, which is depicted here, when, a, when attached here, it turns this weapon into an automatic weapon. This bumps, it becomes a bump stock. And so it will allow that to essentially be fired like an automatic weapon. That's the danger. It's so um, I've had a lot of ex experience and, of course, working with uh, gun safety experts and gun violence prevention organizations over the years. And I understand very, very well what, what this does, what this brace does. And that's the reason why we had a piece of legislation that would effectively ban bump stocks. But in fact, it can actually be used to help facilitate the weapon as a bump stock. I just want to re reaffirm what uh, Ms. McBath just said. This stabilizing brace, when coupled with a buffer tube, operates as a bump stock. Bump stocks are prohibited in this legislation for all the obvious reasons. This is, a, they're, this is attempting to exploit a design flaw for pe persons with disabilities and use it to convert this into a bump stock, which will obviously make the weapon increasingly dangerous and easier for someone to fire. What you just said is one of the most insanely idiotic things I have ever heard. At no point in your rambling, incoherent response were you even close to anything that could be considered a rational thought. It doesn't look like you're banning 22s, and through my years on the bench, I've heard experts repeatedly testify that uh, the weapon of preference for contract killers is a 22 because it's almost impossible to match up um, a round from a 22 back to the weapon, and so contract killers prefer that. Hey, thanks for watching and sticking around to the end. I watched the entire 11 hour or so hearing to pull all of these clips. So if you appreciate the pain, suffering, and emotional trauma I went through for the sake of this video, please subscribe to the channel and share the video around. Also, you want to buy the Steven Seagal hit Exit Wounds or, you know, something good? Well, I've got an Amazon affiliate account now link in the description. Go buy some stuff. I don't care what it is. It'll help me out. Please, if I don't get at least like three people to do it within a few months, they kick me out of the program. So buy whatever. Just click the link first. Anyways, I don't think this absurd bill will pass, but always stay vigilant for your Second Amendment rights. And thanks for watching.